What's going on, everyone? Kurt Widener here in the Team Animal Training Compound. We got episode eight of Ask the Animal. Hey, before we start, let's take a look at that Punisher skull. We got that up yesterday. It's looking pretty good. So I'll probably make some more of those. Maybe make one for the other end. Got to get some glowing eyes. Got a record high temperature, 90 degrees in here. It's getting nice and toasty, which is nice on the uh, training days. Get a good, get a good sweat break breaking. Anyway, all right, so I uh, had a few good questions. Uh, the first one is for my buddy Eugene. Eugene is somebody that I worked with as a uh, consultation client years ago, helped him prep for shows, and in more recent years, he's transitioned into being a triathlete, and um, much respect for that kind of versatility. I like to see uh, people who delve into different things. I like to see bodybuilders who, you know, take on other sports and endeavors that force them to be more functional. So here's, Eugene was asking, um, basically, for uh, most articles advocating strength training for triath uh, triathlon, especially long Ironman distances, uh, do not go into depth explaining whether all things considered, weight training still makes sense. People I follow, not professionals, but pretty good amateur triathletes, skip weight training altogether. Is there really a benefit? If it's injury prevention, what are the mechanisms by uh, which weight training prevents injury? If it's something else, what are the mechanisms of that action? Um, so there's a few things to address here. First of all, yes, I do think that training in general um, can help with injury prevention. And a lot of it has to do with muscle balance. The problem is when you're doing something like triathlon, you're, you're, you're either pedaling on a bike, you're swimming or you're running, you have a lot of repetitive motion that's very, very similar. So you have certain muscles that are probably getting worked very, very hard and other ones that are not being worked as hard. Um, it's common for you know runners to get runner's knee where they basically, uh, the, the quadricep is getting worked more than the hamstring. So a common thing with runners is that they have to strengthen their posterior chain. Uh, they do things to bounce out so they, they can avoid having issues there. Um, so I do think that, yes, yeah, some level of training it can be beneficial for injury prevention. One of the things, and this isn't based on science, this is based on my opinion, and I don't, I'm not a triathlete. I've never done triathlons, but in my experience, I think that the benefit for an athlete, like a triathlete, would be um, efficiency, both like in stride efficiency, whether you're, if you're swimming, stroke efficiency. So if your, your training is set up in an efficient manner, um, there are certain movements that are going to enable you to be more efficient with all those things. When you look at a run, you're running, whether you're running or sprinting, you have that, that kick up with the knee, okay, you extend out, and then you're kicking down, and then you have the butt kick. So if you, ta if you have task in the gym, for instance, pushing a sled, and you're, you're driving, and you're going through that stride, uh, where you're getting each element of that stride, okay, or you're doing a lunge or your step up, these are things that that you're doing with resistance and you're, you're, you're making your body more efficient with, you know, all aspects of that. There's also like, so for instance, like when you're swimming, you, you can do like a stiff arm lap pull, which is going to increase your stroke efficiency and your follow through. Um, you know, there's other things like if, if you look at the, you know, the Navy SEALs, they have to swim endless in number of miles. They can't get tired in water. So what are the things that they do? Tons of flutter kicks. They have to build up the core. So yeah, there are a lot of things that I think um, can, can definitely benefit a triathlete, uh, but here's the thing, and, and this is really true of, of all athletes in all sports, especially something like, you know, long, long endurance stuff like triathlons, Ironman, you're already allocating tons and tons of resources in, in terms of both time and energy to your chosen activity. And so, I mean, you already have to spend a lot of time on the bike. You have to spend a lot of time in the water. You have to lot, spend a lot of time running. So, in let, you know, for those who are amateurs, there's a question of how much more time and energy do you want to allocate towards training for these things? And that's why a lot of amateurs probably are not going to choose to, to weight train because they're already giving up hours. And if they have, you know, families and they have jobs because they're not being paid to be a triathlete for, for a living, um, you know, they, they don't have more, you know, time um, and energy to allocate towards those things. Now, I mean, your professionals might be a different story. 
as a bodybuilder, I'm sure there's a lot of things that I could benefit from doing more. I, I need to spend more time stretching. It wouldn't hurt me to do yoga and, and other things. Would I benefit from it? Well, yeah, I'm sure I would. But if I'm already training two to three hours on some days and I'm training, you know, at least six days a week and then I have property to take care of, uh, you know, I have a relationship, I have dogs, I have all these other things. I have to, you know, have some semblance of balance in my life. And so it's like it, it, the opportunity cost of another hour becomes higher and higher and higher. And so that's something as an individual that you have to decide when you're getting involved in something, you know, how much, how much resources, time and energy and money do you want to allocate towards um, additional resources do you want to allocate towards your given task? So hopefully that answers your question. Um, next, uh, I've done very in-depth reviews on both the Rogers Athletic Squat Pro and also the Legend uh, Squat Machine that I recently got. And I had a couple different people who follow me kind of ask um, about a comparison between the two. It's very, uh, it's a tough comparison and, and I can't, I don't know that I can really say that um, one machine is better than the other, but I wanted to do a quick breakdown. Um, I would encourage you to watch my in-depth review on both of those so you can see the full functionality of both. The Rogers Athletic Squat Pro, um, aka Pendulum Squat, um, the, the most important thing I can say about this machine versus the Legend Squat Machine is this probably more closely simulates a true squat movement. So if you are somebody that is trying to effectively, you know, simulate what you would do with a barbell on your back, then this is going to accomplish that better. You have the articulating shoulder pads, okay? You can set your feet up however you would with a regular squat. If you want to, you know, put your feet more forward and do more vertical squat, you can hit the quads more, you can go wider, you can bring your feet back and do more of a posterior chain involved squat. But Obviously, you can get very good depth from this. Um, you know, it, 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 it definitely simulates a true squat better. The other thing is you have multiple uh, pegs here for the, for the weight, and this actually can change the way you feel the weight. So the more weight that you have on this, um, you're going to feel it more at the top, the, to uh, the top loaded horns is actually going to load the bottom of the movement more. They also have a slightly more expensive one, the XT, uh, which has a third set of horns, and that's supposed to simulate, you know, the, the exact placement of the weight that you would have in a, um, uh, a true squat. So, I mean, this, this machine is designed to be very similar, as close as, as, close as you can get to an actual um, barbell squat while still being a machine. Um, you know, one of the, the things that the, the Legend machine comes with is the calf blaster, but really that's something that you can easily build yourself. As you can see, before I got this, I basically took some scrap wood and metal and some, uh, um, some friction tape and I made a calf platform and I was using that on here. It works very well. So, I mean, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice additive for that machine but it's not, um, it's not something that you can't do yourself. Uh, as I mentioned in my review of this, I think that the angled platform of having it be a leveraged squat machine um, enables you to, to basically do heavy squats um, with less pain to the knees because of that, that upward angle, it puts less patellular stress. Also, if you had any ankle issues, mobility issues, um, it, it enables you to squat heavy um, if you weren't able to do that with, with a bar or the machine. Um, one of the things that I would say that gives this slightly more versatility is the fact that you can do a shoulder press, aka Viking press. And this is something I actually really like. I've used that the last two weeks in a row. Um, also, the Legend um, squat machine, it's, it's friendlier for band, for band work. Um, I did some band work yesterday, tied the bands here, pulled them up on here, which I found a better way to do that. I basically stand up in here, pull them up. I, I set it on the lowest peg setting. Um, really the thing is with, with this machine, with, there isn't, I haven't figured out a good way to use band tension on it. So you can use band tension on this easier than you can on that. Both allow really exceptional range of motion. I mean, you can pretty much go and put your ass right on the ground. 
I mean, you're going to get really good range of motion on this. Um, the only other thing I would say is that maybe a slightly smaller footprint on the, the Legend piece. I mean, this is only 29 inches wide without the cap blaster. It's like 34 width. Um, you know, this machine is going to take up a little more space in your gym. Price point, the Rogers Athletic Squat Pro is considerably more expensive. I mean, brand new, shipped, custom paint job. You're looking at ballpark, I think it was between 41 and 4200 when I bought it. Whereas the Legend um, custom paint shipped, brand new, it was more like 2800 So there is a pretty considerable difference in price. You know, if, if, if price is an issue, um, you know, you're probably going to lean more towards the Legend. I love both machines. I'm really glad I have them both. It gives me versatility. I love leg machines. So hopefully that kind of gives you a nice breakdown of the differences between. So ultimately, I think it's a... Uh, a matter of personal preference as to which one you might want if you're considering purchasing one or the other. So, last question. Uh, my buddy Mark had asked me about, you know, uh, a leg, leg workout for people with home gyms and have limited equipment. Obviously, not everybody has, you know, a 1,200 square foot home gym um, with a bunch of pieces of equipment like this. So, if you're trying to get a leg workout in and you have very basic equipment, um, here's a simple list of things that I would recommend. Some form of squats, okay? If you have a barbell and you can do barbell squats, great. You don't have to have a barbell to do squats. You can take a dumbbell or a kettlebell and you can do, uh, what are they called, goblet squats? Goblet, yeah. Yeah, so you can do that with a dumbbell, you can do it with a kettlebell, you can put a vest on, you can hold dumbbells to the side. There's a lot of different ways to do squats. Second one, a lunge type movement. Lunges, that could be a walking lunge, okay? It could be a step up. If you have something like a bench to do step ups on, keeping your torso very upright, okay? And, you know, adjusting the height to whatever your, your mobility needs are. Um, split squats, you know, so a split squat can be done again with almost no equipment and Whatever amount of weight you want, just elevate the back foot. Um, you can do it with dumbbells, you can do it with a vest. Uh, deadlift. Deadlift is a very important movement for a lower body. A lot of people incorporate them into their back workout, but really it should be incorporated into your posterior chain, which is part of lower body. Um, hip thrusts. Again, these could be done with barbell, but if you have a box or a bench, putting your shoulders on that putting a barbell across here and doing hip thrusts like that for posterior chain um excellent exercise calf raises really simple you can do that on a stair or any type of of ledge you know i can i can sit here on this and do single leg standing calf raises you can do weighted unweighted whatever um there's a lot of great plyometric stuff that you can do um jumps I mean, you can just sit there and do, I'm going to do five sets of 20 jumps and you're going to get a nice conditioning workout from that. Yeah. Dude. What about, uh, can't resistance bands also are a cheap alternative that you can use to a lot of, to add some resistance to if you don't have weights? Absolutely. Can, yeah. I mean, they're pretty cheap. I mean, bands, you know, if you can, you kind of get creative with how you add the resistance, but I mean, without, if you don't have access to a lot of extra weight, I mean, bands take up no space. They're they're not exp they're not, you know, half as expensive as actually buying iron weight. Um, you know, you just have to be a little creative in how you set it up. But you can you can absolutely use them to get a great workout. Um, kettlebell swings, kettlebell swings all day long. I mean, for so many reasons. But a, one of the best forms of explosive hip extension, which is really one of the most fundamental, crucial movements that you need, whether you're trying to increase your strength and your, your squats and deadlifts or be a better athlete, be more explosive. I mean, kettlebell swings is something I would say you should absolutely do two to three times a week, no matter who you are. So, um, and then the last thing, um, you know, hills or stairs, go run, go, you know, go find a nice steep hill or a, a long set of stairs that you can run up and that's going to work everything from your, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your calves. So those are some really, really simple exercises that you need almost no equipment to do. You can do it anywhere. You could be in a small garage or just a room with almost no equipment, and you can do pretty much all those things. So 
Hope that answers your question, Mark. That's all we got for today. I appreciate you guys watching and listening. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. If anybody has any questions or comments, place them below. And if there's anything that you want to see in terms of content, uh, let me know. Until next time, have a great Sunday, everyone. Get after it.